Our next ally is somebody who has worked um, at the University of uh, Cal State Santa, Santa Bern San Bernardino uh, in the Center Against Hate. He is a Stanford Law uh, alumnus. He has developed much in terms of countering hate throughout our state and throughout their, our nation. Please welcome Brian Levin. Salam Alaikum. Good evening, Salam, and these wonderful distinguished guests at MPAC's important conference this evening, especially to people who are hurt and grieving, as all of us are here tonight, but to all others of goodwill, all over the world and in the Holy Land, I want to share my heartfelt solidarity with all of you. Tonight, I want to talk about different levels of solidarity and the ways we employ the term all in our dialogues around this relationship. This quote is from an important Canadian-Palestinian scholar at the University of Toronto. Before being Jewish, we are human being. Before being a Muslim, a Palestinian, or Israeli, we are a human being. And our humanity brings us together when I am defending the Jew, or the Christian, or the African, I am defending myself. No one values human life, I'm sorry, Mehdi, more than doctors. <laughs> doctors worth, <laughs> work months, sometimes years, to save just one life. That's Gaza-born Dr. Izzedine Aboulesh, who was given a Lifetime Achievement Award from our, my former center for the study of hate and extremism, where he is now, after my appointment as well, a senior advisory board member for many years. His role as a physician, but also as a father who lost three daughters in a previous Israeli strike, has profoundly influenced his devotion to peace, and he has been rightly nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. Please read my son's article about him on Voice of America. October 15th, Associated Press. Republican presidential candidate Ron DeSantis and the United, said the United States should not take in any Palestinian refugees if they flee the Gaza Strip because they, quote, are all anti-Semitic. And he dismissed international entreaties for Israel to provide clean running water and utilities to the 2.3 million civilians in the territory. On October 16th, the very next day, the AP ran this headline about Wadia Al-Fayoumi and his mom. Plainfield, Illinois, Muslim boy killed and woman wounded in Illinois hate crime motivated by Israel-Hamas war, police say. A short time later, Florida Representative Brian Mast, what the heck is it with Florida, by the way, <laughs> said, I would challenge anybody, find me a better single word than you could use to describe the Palestinian relationship to Jews than Nazi. Not to be outdone, former Trump Secretary of the Interior, Montana Representative Ryan Zinke, has introduced his third bill, which he proudly describes as expel Palestinians from the United States. And just today, the New York Times reported Donald Trump's second term plan of mass deportation, detention, and a renewed Muslim ban. Which, by the way, after he made that ban, five days after our community was attacked in San Bernardino, hate crimes against Muslim and Arab Americans rose another 23% above the spike that occurred after the uh, attack on our community five, uh, five days earlier. No, no, no. I stand with all who are grieving, and those experience discrimination and prejudice, whether it be Arabophobia, Islamophobia, or anti-Semitism for that matter. Tonight, I want to talk to you about levels of solidarity I've come to think of as solidarity is a pyramid with ascending levels of difficulty and value. But the base or beginning point is absolutely indispensable, and everyone could and should participate in it. 
The first level of solidarity involves respect for everyone's rights as Americans and as fellow human beings. We all have the right to live as we please, worship as we see fit, raise our children in the manner and tradition of our choosing, all without any harassment or discrimination. Hate crimes are totally unacceptable under any circumstances. We need to all support each other in protecting all, in exercising our rights, whether it is religious liberty or peaceful free expression, as well as the speech and debate clause in Congress. This means that when Muslim Americans or Arab Americans are harassed, discriminated against, or subjected to hate crimes, Jewish Americans must stand with them. Indeed, all America, thank you. And I do. Indeed, all Americans of goodwill must, but all Americans need to stand in solidarity with all, all others in defense of people's civil rights and desire to live free from intimidation. Right here in Los Angeles, and we have massive underreporting, so just look at the trend, not the numbers. Anti-Palestinian and anti-Muslim hate crimes rose from one last October in 22 to eight this year, and spikes are similar in other places and against Jews. Our solidarity against this hate has nothing to do with associations other than as human beings and as Americans, and it isn't dependent on agreeing with their belief system or ideology or place in a political debate. However, the second level of solidarity, in my view, involves rethinking tribal or group affiliation. My own affiliation here, after decades of interfaith work, extends to those who actively seek coexistence and harmony across affiliations like religion, ethnicity, culture, language, etc. My tribe is the tribe of urgent, urgent peacemakers. Age, thank you. Agents of education. De-escalation, which is so much a part of the Islamic faith tradition, by the way, but you all know that, and positive change. I invite you to join me in the second level, where aspirations affirm equality, self-determination, and conflict resolution. The third level extends to those who've already experienced direct loss or sacrifice, yet still strive for solidarity and a just peaceful coexistence like Dr. Abu Lesh, who, by the way, uh, Secretary uh, Representative Zinke, uh, Governor DeSantis, who is also a Gazan. When a civilian is killed, whether in Gaza today or on October 7th, we don't advance understanding by blaming civilians for their own deaths. Name calling. And now the name calling is extending to virtually anyone who's Muslim or contextualizing events in a manner that ignores any of them. So I leave you tonight with an earnest aspiration to this wider solidarity, the base of which is an embrace of both universal respect and freedom from intimidation that is indispensable for everyone, but is also especially at risk for many Americans of faith right here in this room tonight and many others elsewhere. Thank you so much for the honor the honor of standing with you against Islamophobia and Arabophobia, which are a scourge. And if you want to make America great, you take away these prejudices, which are more un-American than anything that is stated on the lips of grifting, lying, bigoted politicians. Thank you so much. And <laughs> And if I could just say one thing, as a, a commissioner on the commission uh, from the California State of Hate, which I am not representing tonight, if you could reach out to my friends in the Muslim and Arab American community and tell them that there are those who care for them and support them, and if they are the victim of uh, a hate incident, which is not a crime, or a hate crime, please, if you remember one thing, this number. One eight three thirty eight no hate. One eight three thirty eight no hate. While this talk tonight was personal, I can tell you that the folks in the Civil Rights Department and on the Commission of the State of Hate, which I am not representing tonight, have your back. 
and we love and care and respect for you and want the dignity of all human beings respected in the state because that's how we roll here in California. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you.